So in this video, I just want to talk through the process, the full process of the chi-squared contingency table test. So I'm not going to actually go through an example in this video, but I'm just going to talk it through. This is the process, the full process. Okay. So the first thing that you're going to get given is a table with all of the observed values. Okay. From there, you're then going to construct a table of the expected values, assuming that the events are independent. Then using those two, the observed and expected, you will then build another table, the contributions table, from which you can then calculate the chi-squared statistic, which will be the sum of all of the values in your contributions table. Okay? So, then we go into the hypothesis test. So the hypothesis test starts with H0. There is no association between X and Y. It must be written in context. And H1, there is an association between X and Y in context. Now, for this, uh, you will have the significance level given to, given to you in the question. Okay, From the table, you'll be able to calculate new the number of degrees of freedom. So, um, for new equals, and that's the number of rows, take away one, times by the number of columns, take away one. So if it's a three by three table, for example, then this would be two times two, so new would be four. The, so whatever the significance level you're given, P percent, uh, critical value is, and then you'll be able to read that from the tables in the formula booklet. Okay. Then, once we've got that, we're able to compare it against our chi-squared statistic. So, let's say, for argument's sake, that the chi-squared statistic is greater than the critical value that we've got from the table. In which case, the result is significant. So reject H0. And then we write a conclusion that is non-committal. And in context, there is evidence to suggest There is an association between X and Y in context. So that happens if the chi-squared is greater than the critical value. If it is less than the critical value, then the result is not significant. So fail to reject H0, and then there is insufficient evidence to suggest there is an association between X and Y in context. That, in a nutshell, is the chi-squared contingency table test. Okay. Now, given the amount of time that the exam actually has, so 1 hour and 15, and these questions can go on for quite a while. Um, it's probably unlikely that you would have to do the full thing if it was a 3 by 3 table. Um, but that's not ruling it out. It's just unlikely because of the amount of time that it takes to do this bit. Uh, now, the way to shortcut this bit uh, is either to do a smaller table, like 2 by 2 that's fairly straightforward, 
Um, or you can get around it by having these three tables. Uh, sometimes maybe values might be missing and we've got to calculate specific values. And it's really just testing you on how do you know how to calculate specific values from those tables. Um, consequently then, you've got all of the information and then maybe another part of the question will be the hypothesis test itself.